It's that time of year again. The weather is getting colder, and you'd like to make some animation with the wintry feel. But how do you even start to make snow in Blender? Fortunately, there's a really easy solution. We'll take a look at how to add believable looking snow to the surface of objects, as well as creating objects which appear to be made entirely of snow. All of this is made possible using a free plugin, which you may not be aware of, but is already available within Blender. So the first thing that we need to do is enable the plugin. So to do that, just head up to the edit menu, down to preferences, and click on add-ons. Here we can search for snow, and you'll see this real snow option. Then just check the box to enable the add-on, and then we can close our preferences. Now, normally this is the point in every good Blender tutorial where you'll be asked to delete the default cube. But wait, instead of doing that, let's see if we can make use of it for once. So instead, what we're gonna do with this cube selected is just hit the N key to open the side panel. Then you'll see that we've got this real snow tab added down at the bottom here. Now the snow plugin has very few options. We can change the amount of coverage and we can change the height of that coverage. And we have a selected faces option here as well. For starters, I'm just gonna leave the defaults as they are and with the cube selected, just hit add snow. And you can see that we already have something here. Now, the reason I suggested that we leave the default cube in place is because this demonstrates the fact that when we add snow to an object, it only adds it on the upper faces of that object, which in most cases is exactly what you're going to need. You can see over here in the outliner, it's added a snow collection with the snowball object underneath it. And that by default is parented to our cube here. If I just select that object and delete it, reselect my cube, we can go up to the coverage here and change it to a lower value if we want, and even change our height. And again, hit add snow, and we'll get a different result here. So for the most part, it's as simple as that. But there is one more important thing that you really need to be aware of. So to demonstrate, I've added some lights and a simple background to our default cube scene. This means that we can now compare what the end result looks like when rendered using the different render engines. So here using Eevee, the result looks passable for stylized renders but it's certainly not something that I would call realistic. Whilst you might expect things to improve once we enable cycles, the results actually aren't that impressive either. In fact, this ends up looking more like some sort of wet icing than believable snow. I've seen some people suggesting that you should start changing settings on the shader at this point, but the real solution is much simpler and will lead to a far better result. Blender's Cycles Render Engine comes with a set of experimental features, and this can be enabled over in the property panel just underneath the render engine options. We can switch from supported to experimental. Once these experimental features are enabled, if we re-render the scene without changing anything else, the results are far better. This is because the snow shader makes use of micro poly displacement, which is only possible using adaptive subdivision, which requires the experimental features to be enabled. At this point, you can go ahead and add snow to the upward facing surfaces of pretty much any object that you'd like a default cube, a monkey head, or even an innocent little bird who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Choice is yours. But what if you want to make something that's entirely covered in snow? A snowman, for instance. Once we've added snow to an object in a scene, we have easy access to the snow shader, which can then be added to any other object. In this scene, I've created a very simple snowman with a basic flat shader. And I've already added snow to the ground plane using the real snow plugin. Now, if I select the individual spheres which make up the snowman, I can go ahead and apply the same snow shader, which is automatically generated by the plugin. If we add this and render our scene, we still don't get the result that we're expecting. Even though we have the experimental features of cycles enabled, the snowman looks as if it's been rendered without those features enabled. That's because enabling the experimental features of cycles simply allows us to make use of a different subdivision method for the objects we're rendering. And this needs to then be enabled for each individual modifier. If we take a look at the snow surface, you can see here that the subdivision method is set to adaptive, and this has been applied automatically by the plugin. For any other object, we need to go ahead and add a subdivision modifier, and then switch it to adaptive subdivision. Once we've done this, we can then re-render our scene, and the result is a believable snow effect. The final thing that you need to be aware of is that the snow shader is affected by the scale of the underlying object. For example, with the snowman set to a scale of two here, we get one look to our snow, but if we apply that scale and re-render the scene, we end up with a very different result. This is something which you can make use of in order to achieve either a rougher or more compact snow effect. 
I hope that you've enjoyed this brief tutorial, and if you'd like to learn more about creating and animating characters in Blender, just head over to intoanimation.com, where you'll find a range of courses and articles designed to help you do just that. <laughs>